Hey guys, this is Christy from 52 Hyder 3D with the new release notes for the Blender 2.71 update. Um, so let's just have a quick run through of what we've got. We've got um, baking support for cycles, we've got fire and smoke support for cycles, we've got a whole load of new cool animation tools, uh, we've got pretty much that's it. There's a few UI um, improvements and a couple of little modeling tweaks, but it's uh, there's not all that much uh, new in this update. Um, but let's anyway have a look at uh, the new version. So let's just launch it up here. And we have a new splash screen, which is the coolest one we've had for a while, I think. Um, let me open up my demo scene. Okay, and let's have a look at cycles first. Now, I know we now have smoke and fire support, but um, I'm doing this in a bit of a hurry, and I have no idea how to get smoke to work in cycles yet. Sorry. So, I won't be covering smoke but I'm sure there'll be a flood of tutorials on how to do smoke and fire in cycles very soon. But let's get on with the stuff I can do. Um, first of all, this, this is something I have personally been waiting for for a while, is the UV map node. Um, something that was just never really introduced for no apparent reason. Um, but we've got it now, so you can choose different UV maps if you have different UV maps to put into your UV map uh, node. And that is completely the wrong place for it, isn't it? I've just realised that. Uh, oh well, doesn't matter. Let's just cut that. So, but anyway, that's um, what that does. That just allows you to select different UV maps. I know you could do it before by using the attribute node. Uh, but it was a bit of a pain and that's quite nice and easy to use. Uh, moving along, uh, yes, now we get into baking. Now, for those of you who don't know, baking is where you take um, a render, uh, so let me just render this, like this. So we've got a render there. That render, instead of being rendered to a, an image like this is instead rendered onto a UV map. So instead of getting a, a representation here, we get a flat UV unwrapped representation of the render. So they have basically taken the old internal rendering engine um, bake stuff and stuck it straight into cycles and it seems to work pretty well. Um, so down at the bottom of the render panel we now have the bake panel. Um, so you have a load of different options here and every different pass can be baked. So let me just do uh, diffuse colour which as you can see is a kind of pink. So let me bake this out to the um, to the image and you'll notice in this material I have an image texture node with that image uh, selected. I, that seems to be how you get it to tell it to bake to that image and not another image. Just have that node hovering and that seems to work. So let me hit bake and you can see what happens and then we get the texture bake and you see it comes up pink which doesn't actually appear to be the right colour. Um, so I don't know quite what's going on there. Uh, that looks actually more like the wrong sort of... Uh, let me have a look at this. What am I supposed to do? What am I on? I'm on diffuse colour. Let me try diffuse direct. I think that's the right one to use if you want just a normal bake. It's just taking its time, which is hopeful. There, that's more what we're looking for. And you see that is a rendered image that's been UV unwrapped. You can do this for loads of different um, passes, so if you want to export the emission or 
the shadows on the this particular thing. I think shadow can be quite impressive actually. Let me do that one. Yeah. So that's very cool. Um, the other thing we can now do is make UV maps. Um, if you select normal, we can choose object space. I'm not very good at making these, but um, you end up with this cool idea. Uh, if you do a um, sum, we just do a little work on this. Like that, and then I bake this. And that hasn't worked at all, has it? Try that again. There you go. Now we get this recognisable uh, normal map for. Um, and this again can be exported to a game engine or can be rendered onto a low poly version of whatever it is you're rendering uh, to save on RAM which is again particularly useful in game development. Okay, so I think that's about it for cycles. Let me flip over to the other, the other um, scene I've got, which is animation. So, yeah, so, okay. So I have this cube here. Sorry, it's disappearing here and I've animated it so it does that. Now you should all be familiar with the handle type options so you can make free vector aligned automatic or auto clamped handles. We now have a whole pile of new options for handles um, which comes under if you press T. Okay, and we have usually we have a Bezier interpolation but now we can have linear, which is kind of what you do if you use vector handles. Um, but this is just a bit of a shortcut, and that's obviously just a linear interpolation there. Uh, let's try again. We can have the constant one, which is just on, off, on, off. Um, and we can use that for, I don't know what you'd use that for, but anyway, you see how it works. Um, we also have these easing ones which are um, to do with mathematical formulas uh, I really don't understand them but they um, yeah you can see what they do they've got a little diagram even to show you the really funny ones are the dynamic effects so we can have the one that bounces back and it, so it overshoots and then goes back and, and of course you could animate these manually but this just saves a bit of time so what else we've got, we've got the bouncing one where this will bounce up and down boing 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 um, and the not, last but not least is the elastic one which is just uh, does it as if it was pulled down by elastic Okay, so I think that's about it for things I'm going to demonstrate to you. There are a couple of new updates um, that I haven't gone into, mainly because I don't know how they work. Stuff to do with freestyle rendering, which I know very little about. Game engine development, which I know very little about. Um, and again, I don't know how to get the smoke to work. So I'm sure you can uh, work it out for yourself after a bit of trial and error. And if you do work it out, please post it in the comments so I can find out too. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some of my other videos. I do not just do update overviews. Uh, follow me on Twitter at 52Hydro3D. Uh, like me on Facebook, 52Hydro3D. Again, you can do the same on Google+. Please like and subscribe. See you later.